Um, all right, welcome again, everyone, to the regular meeting of the Board of Directors for Regen. It's January 19th, and it is 9-10. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, Ida, any just cause notifications or emergency circumstance requests? Okay. Uh, and and Director Delgado did. No, I don't see him looking. Okay, thank you, Ida. Yeah. All right, um, I'm two is welcoming our new board members. So um, I really want to welcome Alexis Garcia Arzola from City of Seaside. Thank you very much for um, for joining us. Happy to have you. And then also Peter McKee from Pebble Beach. So thank you very much you. for being here. Um, okay, I have a roll call, please. Chair Shirley. Here. Vice Chair Delgado. Chair Blackwelder. Here. Director Askew. Here. Director Pete. Here. Director Barber. President. Director Ferlito. Here. Director Garcia Arizola. Here. And then um, Director McKee will be voted in, right? So. Correct. We have more. Great. Thank you, Ida. All right. We, um, we've already done the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll move on to public communications. Again, anyone wishing to address the board on matters not appearing on the agenda may do so now. Um, you're going to limit your comments to a maximum of three minutes. So I'll go ahead and move in public comments. I show no problem. And closing public comments. Um, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Um, I'd like to pull uh, 6B. Are there any directors who would like to pull any other items? Anyone from the public like to pull an item from the consent? All right, so let's go ahead and address um, 6E. And I could, I could uh, Chair Shurnak could speak to that just briefly. Uh, if the uh, uh, item uh, has been pulled on the consent agenda, so mm -hmm. I would recommend that this item be heard first now uh, and voted on. And this item is to appoint uh, Director McKee, uh, who's the Director of the Authority, long-standing member of the Authority. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this would appoint Director McKee to the uh, Monterey Regional Waste Management District Board. Uh, and the history of this is since Pebble Beach uh, joined, Pebble Beach Community Services District joined the authority back in 1990, uh, the practice has always been to appoint the uh, designated director who previously was Director Laska, and uh, he served for 20 years in that role. Uh, and to appoint uh, the representative of the Pebble Beach Community Services District to the district board. And the rationale for this is without that appointment, uh, the district board would be eight members. And the uh, public resources code allows a member to be appointed to make sure that there's an odd number so that you, you won't have a situation where there's a number of tie votes. So this action before you under the whole consent item would be then to officially appoint uh, Director McKee from the authority to the district board to serve as the director of the Monterey Regional Waste Management District. If there's any questions, I can try to address those. Yes. Good uh, question. Thank you for the explanation. Yes, so, um, uh, uh, Supervisor Askew represents all of Monterey County, the unincorporated area. We could have we could have the board could in theory appoint um someone else besides um from Pe only pebble beach say from if there was a big sur organization that could in theory happen or no in theory legally i believe that's the case yeah okay i just sorry to bring that up <laughs> Too late. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Good question. Good question. Pebble Beach has a long history, obviously, on this board. So, um, any other questions or comments on the party? And and I would mention that uh, you know Pebble Beach Community Services District does serve uh, as a representative on the. Uh, Technical Advisory Committee and uh, Mike Nickham right here. <laughs> and they want to make a comment. And of course, they have been very, very uh, helpful and instrumental in uh, many of the issues that have come before the district uh, in in that role. So uh, they've been a very, very ma valuable member of the regional district. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and open up this item for comments. 
I'm probably the only person here who was here when that all this happened. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the reason this convoluted process came up is because this district was formed by legislation. And so instead of this, if, and, and our district since 1982 has had a solid waste land authority. And so the, the county doesn't have solid waste authority in our district, just like they don't have a authority in Pacific Grove being built within the county of Monica. And, and so the, the background is we go through this little thing. Uh, the reason why it's important that we're on the authority is because that's the, the authority that borrows the money. And so that's the place where all the jurisdictions agree that they're gonna send everything out here, the flow control. And then that's what's used to kind of, uh, the, for the bondholders the security. And so that's how we ended up with this complicated process. Mm -hmm. It saves us going to the legislature. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yeah. All right, um, bring it back to the board. I'd like to vote on this on this item. Motion. I'll move approval of Peter McKee as um, our uh, representative. Second. But Kelsey, just representing Kelsey should be the representative, right? <laughs> According to the the, 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 resolution. the resolution. Okay, great. Right. Right. All right, super. Thank you. So, um, this first by Drew you and um, start with the papers. So, thank you. Um, all right. So, um, you've got a motion. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, now we're moving on to the general consent um and so uh we've got items six b six a six b c d and f i'll move approval of the remainder all right second all right great thank you directors um all those in favor oh, oh public sorry thank you um take this out to the public any public comments on these items six and um, a through uh d and six f all right, we'll bring it back. All right, so we have a motion. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Great, thank you. All right, moving on to um, recognition and presentations. Uh, we've got 7A presentation of resolution 2024-01 of appreciation for director Jason Campbell. So um, I have a resolution up here that I'd like to read for Jason. Um, so just to let you know what I'm reading here. Um, in appreciation of service presented to Jason Campbell, whereas he has represented the city of Seaside on the Regional Monterey Board of Directors from January 2017 to December 31st, 2023. And whereas he has served as vice chair and chair and served on the personnel committee. And whereas while serving on the personnel committee, he provided meaningful input and guidance during labor contract negotiations, numerous personnel related matters, and navigated Regen Monterey through difficult decisions associated with employee safety in relation to the COVID 19 pandemic and displayed thorough understanding of operational and financial challenges facing Regen. And whereas while serving on the interagency ad hoc committee, he contributed to a working relationship with Regen Monterey's neighboring agency. Monterey One Water to find possible opportunities for cost savings and shared services. And whereas during his tenure at Regen Monterey, he displayed knowledge of Regen operations and shared his experiences as a self call customer to the board and staff while using Regen Monterey facilities. And whereas his guidance and leadership have contributed to the Regen's infrastructure for solid waste management, including a five megawatt landfill gas to energy plant, franchise hauler truck yard and maintenance facility, materials recovery facility, two point waste facility, last chance mercantile and long-term landfill disposal capacity, all at one of the lowest rates in the region and the state. And whereas he has many contributions, have his many contributions to help Regen Monterey continually fulfill its mission of doing more to waste less. And whereas he will be missed for his dedication, ethics contribution, and forward vision of serving the public. And now, therefore, it be resolved that the Board of Directors of Regen Monterey hereby recommend, commends, and expresses its appreciation 
and best wishes to Jason Campbell, passed and adopted this 19th of January 2024 by the Board of Directors. Thank you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't need to go up there anymore. <laughs> Welcome back. We'll go around. Hello. 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 I had one of those uh, nightmares, like I was showed up to school not being prepared. And <laughs> turns out, I don't, I don't have to be prepared because you're taking that. <laughs> so thank you. Um, anyway, it's been a pleasure being on this board. Uh, you guys, all of you, do such good work. Really, I mean, it's just been easy. And, and Alexis, you'll feel I'm certain you'll be very happy to be on this board. I mean, you as well. Um, I think. Um, I think if you keep doing the great work, what I'm about to do now is going to continue to be easy. I'm going to go to the uh, uh, last chance, drop some stuff off. I'm going to go to hazardous waste, drop some stuff <laughs> off, take a dryer to the to the landfill, and it's five dollars out of pocket for me. All that, all that stuff, and that's because of the, the great stuff you guys are doing. So, uh, so thank you, everyone, and um, yeah. She built the middle. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. I, I, if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, I, I chime in. I had an opportunity to meet Jason early in my career. Um, you know, we were at, at the same meeting, um, and it, it's always been appreciated the challenge that he brings to the board and to the dynamics and the need of any organization that he's participating in and i think that's always what's welcome and i think that's what makes our, our board very functional is that we have the ability to discuss debate and then come to a solution and have an agreement that's unilateral across the organization so we're going to miss you um and it was super exciting having the opportunity to work beside you uh, for two years well, thank you very much thank you Felipe. Yeah, and Jason, I'm you know I'm gonna miss you. Um, you've always been someone I've looked up to. Um, we've been super thoughtful on this board, and um, your questions will be missed. But um, feel free to ask questions anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Chair. Yes. I, I oh, absolutely. I, I met uh, Jason uh, nine years ago when he just entered the fray of local politics and I've always been impressed with uh, you know his kindness and and his willingness to engage and try to do the best thing for the community I echo some of the words that uh, we didn't know or just the uh, original manager just said um so I I hope we will see each other around town I'm sure <laughs> thank you thank you Bill yeah, and and I, echoing the comments as well, but I think Jason, when you leave when you leave the political space, sometimes you need to be like, okay, like I helped see it, I did the things, I showed up. But I will say you changed the course. And the fact that the work that you did on Seaside City Council fundamentally changed the landscape of the community that we live in. The work that you did here that I had the honor of doing with you, um, working with you, following your lead on. Um, here on this board has opened a door for a collaboration and partnership between uh, Region and Monterey One Water, uh, deepening that uh, that that connection in a way that will again leave um, just a, a legacy of a different path for us to be on. And um, I just I want to emphasize to you that your the sacrifices that you made. Um, on behalf of all of us and our kids and our grandkids, um, I appreciate you in ways that I could never begin to express. Um, your leadership has been tran truly transformational for our region, um, and you will be missed deeply here where I get to work most closely with you. But as a resident of this community, I have just the deepest, deepest appreciation um, for everything that you've done. Thank you. And you have a well-deserved uh, retirement from politics. <laughs> <laughs>
Great. Great. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, all right, we'll move on to 7B, edible food recovery capacity building rates for fiscal year 2018. Yes, at this uh, time, we'll have Zoe Schultz uh, introduce the items and the guest, or uh, Eric Palmer introduce the guest and, and the item. <laughs> Uh, good morning, board of directors, um, and welcome to new board members. Uh, my name is Eric Palmer. I'm the public education outreach coordinator here at Regen. Um, very proud to present this agenda item today. Uh, we talk a lot about California Senate Bill SB 1383, which is a short lived climate pollutants bill here at these meetings. But uh, so I know you're all very aware of the bill, but for the record and the public, um, its mandate is to reduce um, land billing organic material by 75%. Um, our agency has been working together with your jurisdictions, um, our local waste haulers in Salinas Valley Recycles to increase participation in food scrap collections at home, homes, businesses, and schools so that we can turn what used to be waste um, into rich compost for local farms. Um, we're seeing a lot of success and uh, the work to increase participation will continue. Um, another brilliant part of this law is what's called uh, edible food recovery. Um, so besides the food scraps being generated in homes, um, as you can imagine, there's a lot of uneaten food um, that goes to waste in restaurants, um, grocery stores, schools, hotels, wholesale food vendors, anywhere with cafeterias, and a lot of this food is edible. Um, so feeding hungry people uh, through food recovery is the best possible use for surplus food, and it's a vital way for California to, to conserve resources and reduce the waste thrown in the landfills. Um, we have some excellent local food recovery organizations that were already established prior to this law. Uh, they include churches and food pantries, nonprofits that serve disadvantaged seniors, students, um, residents with developmental disabilities, homeless residents, and veterans. Um, we have an edible food uh, recovery subgroup of the Technical Advisory Committee, uh, which is a working group that's comprised of staff from your uh, jurisdictions and the haulers, uh, Regen Monterey and Salinas Valley Recycles, staff um, and we developed an edible food recovery grant program that aids these uh, local food recovery organizations um, and this grant program is funded by cal recycle sb 1383 local assistance grant program funding and an mou uh, between regen monterey and Salinas valley recycles and their member agencies for sb 1383 compliance we really we released a um grant application where organizations can request funding for things like equipment and materials, uh, supplies, transportation or staffing, will, which will help them increase the total pounds of edible food that they can process and distribute. Um, we've given presentations to you in the past where we funded projects uh, that include freezer and refrigeration units, food recovery vehicles, shelving, uh, kitchen and food preservation supplies. And as part of this grant cycle, we wanted to require the use of Carrot, which is an app that connects food generators to those organizations um, so that these organizations can become aware of when uh, the food is available for pickup and, or delivery, and then they can find this information quickly online. Um, we had 15 applications submitted and the Edible Food Recovery Subcommittee reviewed each application. And we wanted projects that um, served a wide variety of Monterey County residents, and or high population areas. Um, they wa we wanted them to be accessible to the public and uh, we wanted ones that demonstrated innovative solutions and the potential to increase the edible food um, that they are able to process and distribute. So seven organizations were chosen to receive grant funding this fiscal year and we have several here today. Um, Salinas Valley Recycled recognized the organizations at their board meeting last night and distributed their portion of the grant funding. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Mandy Brooks from SVR, who is a vital contributor to this project and is here today. Um, we have a really great relationship with uh, Mandy and uh, her team, and we collaborate almost weekly on communications and regional issues such as SB 1383 and illegal dumping, which affects our whole county, not just our district. Um, Ted Terrasis is here uh, online, and he helped lead this group. Um, and uh, we have, we're lucky to have five organizations here today who um, will briefly share how we're helping their organizations to deliver food to hungry and uh, local residents in need. Uh, first up is the Otter Alumni. I'm really proud that we funded a special project at uh, CSU 
Monterey Bay. I'd like to introduce um, Robin DeCanto from CSU UMB, um, who set, has set up a on-campus free grocery store for students who um, are confronting food insecurity. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Eric said, I'm Robin DeCanto. My pronouns are she, her. I'm the basic needs program coordinator at Cal State Monterey Bay under the Division of Student Life. Um, I come to you with the most gratitude and so much humility to have these funds. For our free grocery store on campus, we call it The Hub. We are able to restart a program called Otter Eats in which we go across campus and across the county to um, recover edible food, whether that be leftover catering or food items from the um, eateries on campus. In addition to going around the county to any grocery store, that will give us donations. Um, that's where I'm going next, to Safeway, to pick up donations. So previously, this was just happened in my tiny little Scion. Um, so now we have the ability to purchase infrastructure to safely transport those items and then also safely distribute them out to students. So we serve roughly 400 students a day in our space. Um, in the fall semester alone, we had 3,400 3,045 individual unique students come into our space over 25,583 visits. So um, our free grocery store is well utilized on campus and this just allows us to be able to get even more food to the students that previously would have gone to the landfill. So, so, so grateful for all that you all do here and allowing us to continue these projects. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and then, as you know, we have a strong partnership with the Veterans Transition Center who operate our famous Last Chance Mercantile. Um, but of course, they've been well known um, much longer in our community for their help, um, their efforts to house, feed, and assist uh, local homeless veterans. Uh, so um, we have Kurt uh, Shaka here and Fre uh, Freya Reed, um, but who's going to talk about how um, our grants are going to help aid their organization. We have uh, Thomas Lampier. Good morning. I'm Thomas Lampier, and I am the grant writer and peer specialist at the Veterans Transition Center of California. Of course, with me is Kurt Shockey, Larry Atkins, who oversees our pantry operation, and Freya from Last Chance Mercantile. You know, when this grant application came up, we really looked at it and said, what can we do with this that's going to help us help the hungry population in this county? So we came up with a plan to get a 72 cubic inch freezer, a 72 cubic inch refrigerator, and to extend our hours of operation. And with this grant, we're gonna be able to do that. Last month, BTC processed 700 people through our food pantry. That's 700 veterans and 700 others that are non-veterans. We don't turn anybody away. I can personally tell you what it's like to wake up hungry and grow throughout my day hungry. So something like this, it really hits home. It really hits home. We can look at this as a grant, but I choose to look at this as a partnership. It's a collaborative effort, not just between other organizations in the community, it's a partnership with you. And that impact is not just gonna last a year, this is gonna last many years. This is gonna increase our capacity to recover food by at least 30%, and we expect to increase in our operations by at least 30%, especially during the springtime and summertime when that transit population is gonna come to this county. So thank you so much, and thank you for making a lasting impact, not just on our organization, but throughout Monterey County. Thank you. From the Fort Ord Environmental Justice Center, we have Ramonza. Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad to be here. Hi, Wendy. Hi. <laughs> I seem to follow her around. Um, <laughs> I'm the executive director of the Fort Ord Environmental Justice Network. And we have been doing this since we found out about the closure of Fort Ord. And we still deliver food all over the peninsula to whoever is hungry. And when we get those calls, uh, we have one lady, she's uh, she got a little five-year-old girl. Uh, she's a grandma. She only got seven. 
$17 a month in food stamps. And so I am so glad to see that Monterey County and the people who are here, uh, Monterey, uh, Jen, Salinas Valley Recycle, and, and all of the others who are involved, I am just grateful that we are expanding the vision to feed people. And I took part in the recycle. I tried to uh, look at the training of where we use the worms and everything. I couldn't do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> I couldn't do the worms. But I, 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 we also traveled to, to Sacramento and met with California Recycle. And this is the first time I've been here. You all have been hiding this from me. And I, I know where you are now. <laughs> so I, we are just so grateful that we'll be able to get a, a, a commercial refrigerator freezer. And I thank uh, God for the carrot program and for Kathy, Kathy with uh, Blue Strack and everybody that's involved. Thank you so very much. This is the first time we've ever gotten anything uh, uh, as far as grants or, or donations for our work. Thank you. Um, from Gathering for Women, we have Stacy L. Z. Blair Perkins. Good morning. So nice to be here with all of you. I'm Stacey L. Zubler Perkins, Executive Director of Gathering for Women Monterey. We're at a day center for homeless and housing insecure women on the peninsula. And we provide various services, which include uh, breakfast five days a week and uh, hot breakfast five days a week. And for uh, Monday through Thursday, hot lunches and then meals on the weekends. This grant will help us not only transport safely items from various grocery stores and restaurants, to our facility, but it would also help us decrease our costs because as you know, the food just costs continue to rise and makes it very, very difficult to serve over 400 women each year. We're serving about 17,000 meals between our day center and the Casa de Noche Buena shelter. And this will offset those costs enormously and keep food out of landfills. So we are enormously grateful. Thank you so much for your support. have Bills on Bills in the Monterey Peninsula they, and their great work, and we have Esther Hobbs here today. Good morning. My name is Esther. I'm here for Meals on Wheels. I just wanted to say thank you so much. We are starting a new program called Pickles and Bits. Our chefs are so excited to take some of the fresh produce that we are that are is donated that we can't necessarily get out fast enough to all of our clients across Monterey County. And pickle it and use a cryovac machine to freshly freeze it and use it later on. They are so excited. I can't even begin to tell you they this is their dream project and we're so excited to work together and hopefully maybe we can even with listening to some of the other organizations support them with some pickles. So thank you very much. <laughs> and lastly we have um Robert Frary from the Data Center. Good morning, board members. I'm Robert Frey, the executive director with the Gateway Center of Monterey County. Um, for over uh, 60 years, we've been providing uh, care, uh, residential day programs, and other programs for those with uh, special needs, with uh, disabilities. For the last 40 years, we've been uh, providing care for adults with developmental disabilities in residential day programs and school-based programs. So. Uh, over any given year, we serve between 70 and 110,000 meals, and um, part of our um, goal and our mission is to not only provide great services and care for these folks, but to make sure that they're healthy, to make sure that they have meals, and to make sure they're cared for. We have some in-service programs in our um, Congress Avenue facility in, in Pacific Grove, but we also have facilities in Salinas and in um, Marina. And we go into folks' homes um, to make sure that they're cared for. So being part of this um, innovative program is a blessing to us, and we appreciate um, your support. So thank you so much.
So thank you for um, allowing us to present. Um, we're just going to take a real quick picture of these oversized checks. Um, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you guys don't mind. I have no check. No, no. Uh, we're we're going to stay to the back of the room here. Oh, right. I know it's like going to be a little bit of a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. 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 Here Salinas Valley Recycle, Regen Monterey, and then all these other organizations come together under a legislation item and to see the impact that you're making across the community. You know, many communities, many homes, and many families being helped and nourished through this process. So you guys are, have become the role model for many other um, areas that have not carried out this edible food recovery portion. There's a lot to be proud of. You know, Mike sitting in the audience, uh, we appreciate everything you do to yield um, the push around all these items. They're all important. And to see them take the strides that they have in, in a two year period and to still see the bandwidth to do more. Great, great appreciation for the service to the community and to all the folks that are in the need of having uh, what everybody should have is a meal and all the resources that we can provide to them. So thank you, thank you for everything that you do in the community mm -hmm. and uh, mimic Director Barbara, continue continue mm -hmm. to provide that service to our community. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'd just like to say thank you and echo the comments so far, but you know, it's really interesting. 
as uh, 1383 brought up a lot of negative things for people. Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. They you don't see the outcome of 1383 mm -hmm. environmentally and socially. Okay. Um, it's shocking how much hunger there is in such an affluent farmland area. And what you do every day is a labor of love. And I think we all recognize that this goes beyond um, what most people in their homes see and do every day. And it took a mandate from the state to get this going, um, but you are making it a successful one for both the people who are hungry or um, the people in your organizations that see this opportunity to do good and for the environment. So thank you so much. We are so proud of what you're doing and your innovation. Um, It'll be nice to hear back when you have a chance to how your grant is serving you and what you're doing on it. It'll be an inspiration for people in the future to put in for a grant. So thank you, thank you. Oh, um, yes, yeah, go ahead. I just want to echo all the sentiments here. I know I just started probably 40 minutes ago. <laughs> Hearing the great stories and the great work that you're doing is not going to notice it. It inspires me, actually. You know, you're servicing a wide range of constituents mm -hmm. throughout the area from our young adults to our senior citizens to our veterans. And that makes a difference in people's lives. That the work that my colleagues here have done is trickling down into the community to the real people. And I think, you know, to me, that's inspiring. I commend every one of you well deserved. And I too would like to, to to hear some some updates later on to see how you're continuing to serve the students. So congratulations for to Brad. I've been part of this and see this. Yeah, thank you. Eric, thank you for the presentation. And I really want to thank the TAC for those who reviewed the applications. You made great choices. I, I appreciate the diversity. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you truly are covering um, all of our, you know, all of, all of the constituents here in the county and um, in ages and diversity. And I appreciate that. So thank you for all that you do. Um, I'm really happy you are here to receive your award. And um, thank you again for everything. So. Go now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the next item, 7C, which is the three year service award for you, the chair. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chair. At this time, we want to uh, thank Kim for her service. Uh, it's three years of service here at Regent Monterey and Counting, and now as uh, taking on a new role as the chair, I'm super excited. I think we're very fortunate to have a chair like Kim. She's very broad, and she will expand her knowledge as she gets ideas and information, in, in, inputs, and feedback. Uh, very desirable. We're very happy to have her as our chair. And thank you for your service and tenure. Uh, I couldn't be more happy to be here, just to be honest. You guys are a great group of people. Um, this board is amazing. You're fun to work with. The staff is incredible. So, um, and, and we're doing such cool things. I mean, the last agenda item really exemplifies that, but we, we are far reaching and we are. Regent does big things for the planet, and that that just like checks all my boxes in my heart. So thank you for everyone. Appreciate it. All right, we'll move on to seven uh, B, which is a three year service award for director Wendy Rodas. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wendy is such a busy person, but you have, have dedicated yourself to to this um organization you come here you ask great questions 
you are involved, you have so many things going on, but when you are here, you um you give your all and I appreciate everything you do for each other. So Thank it's you. been it's been an honor to serve with you. Thank you, President yes. Shirley. <laughs> and it's an honor to serve with you. Um three years I'm entering my fourth year um on the county board of supervisors, and we serve on Oh my gosh, in addition to our Tuesday board meetings, there's maybe two dozen additional boards and committees um, that I find my way around to. Um, and each one has an agenda packet, each one has staff reports, each one has its own very specific and unique issues. And I have absolutely loved getting to sort of dive deeper into what um, our local landfill does, how our waste management system works. It's kind of like the the, the wizard behind the curtain, you put your garbage out and then who, I, I never really thought as, as much detail as I have these past couple of years, about what happens next? And um, I, I think we in, in, in Monterey County and in, um, in, the, in the region district, we have a phenomenal leadership team uh, that makes serving on this board um, relatively easy. And we've got great leadership um, on the board as well. Thank you for stepping mm -hmm. up. So yeah, we'll, three, we'll do three more and see where we go from there. Thank you. Thanks for hearing me with my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Any any comments? We look forward. We look forward to more wonderful service from both of you. Oh, thank you, Val. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, let's move on to the discussion action items. We've got eight A. Recycling Processing Agreement with Buckeye Processing and Merck LLC. Okay. So, thank you, Chair. At this time, we'd like to introduce this item. Um, we'd like to recommend um, approving um, the ability to execute an agreement with Buckeye Processing, uh, Merck for Processing Materials. It is a two-year term, and we will work with our attorney to uh, use our template uh, that we've created for our single screen recycling users and, and align the request to the two-year agreement. The material currently is the Fort Hunter Leggett military base just outside of King City. It'll come from there. Um, and the decision to bring the material here was around the economics and the transport time uh, to the other facility um, that lied within um, outside of the county area in San Luis Obispo. So the opportunity for us is to take some um, intermediate uh, material tons uh, to be processed through our facility uh, for a two year period and see uh, the results that we can get. Um, a couple items to point out of the material stream. It a, has recently done a composition study, 90% recycled material, about 10% residual. For the industry, that is a great composition study um, and it's a good opportunity for us to incorporate some additional volume um, to our material recycling stream at, at this time. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the directors? I, I was wondering um, that 90% sounds like a very high measure mm -hmm. trip in uh, Regen's experience. Has there been uh, much of any problems? Any of the haulers? Not in that. It's an emotional. It's an emotional, though at time we uh, <clears throat> saw it. Uh, they, um, the vendors that do all the wings on don't have material. No. That was driving the high number. So we're expecting high, high fiber, a lot of cardboard in that material stream coming from the military base. And to Jay's point, it is material that's already being segregated out. Um, so we're, you know, the, the process will just go run it normally and it shouldn't uh, invoke any issues with our current operation here. Okay. Any other questions? Question? Yes. Yeah. Well, what percent of our total volume is represented by this new contract? 
It's like less than a uh, half of a percent of the yeah. average. Yeah. One half of one percent. Yes. <laughs> very nominal, Thank very you. nominal volume. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If I could just mention one small item, if, if we could approve this uh, particular agreement with the same language that's in 8B, subject to legal counsel concurrence to form, because we're still working, as the general manager mentioned, we're still working on the template mm -hmm. agreement. A little bit, nothing major. Yeah, okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you for that. Okay, so I'll take it out to the public. Any public comments on this item? Okay. Bring it back to the directors. <laughs> Go ahead and take a motion. A motion uh, that we um, accept the recommended recommend, recommend, uh, motion to approve recycling processing agreement with Buckeye Processing and MRF LLC for processing and region moderate MRF at approximately 100 tons per month of recyclable materials collected from North San Luis Obispo County and a South uh, Monterey County military contract as the legal team continues to work with them. Okay, thank you, Director Carlito. All right. Um, any other further discussion on this item? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you. All right, moving on to the next item, 8B, execute an agreement with Green Waste Recovery LLC for single stream recycling, short term processing services subject to legal counsel's concurrence to form. Okay. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, th this is another opportunity for some very short term material. Um, Green Waste is going through, um, going to be doing some work at their current facility that's located in Watsonville. Uh, currently, they are. Uh, we are in a partnership with Greenways Recoveries. Uh, they help uh, hold the seven uh, Peninsula City uh, franchise agreements along with Monterey County. Um, I'll take that back. Without Monterey County, just the seven Peninsula Cities and the Pebble Beach Community Services District. Um, so they are a partner. They also uh, have uh, leased our truck yard here at our facility. Uh, we received a request in the month of December from Jim Marasco, their general manager. Uh, for their facility, requesting a 10-day period and what the notification period was. We wanted to keep it in alignment with everything else that we're working on, and that's keep the standard uh, agreement that we have um, whole. And and this this one instance was really to uh, create the triggering triggering event um, for this franchise agreement was was specifically different um, because it is a 10-day event due to repairs. We really wanted to invoke that opportunity to either receive or deny uh, volume based on what the request is. So we want to incorporate that into the agreement. It is 10 days uh, worth of material, um, give or take, you know, I would say two, two or three days if, if there's any issues with uh, parts or maintenance, but that the agreement would uh, essentially could bring 100,000 uh, tons of material uh, as well. And so at this point, I make a recommendation that we take the intermediate tons um, and al allow green waste recoveries to bring material here for the allotted time to make the repair. And then it also gives us a, um, if we ever run into an opportunity where we need repairs, uh, like when the Baylor went down, we have another um, resource for us to deliver materials and return mm -hmm. the favor uh, that was once involved on us. So at this point, um, I'll take any questions or concerns. Um, so quick question. Um, I noticed like they were talking about GWR um, in anticipating some sort of, they may experience an outage in the future. How would that impact us financially if that happened? Um, so it, it has very little impact. It is incremental tons. Again, it's 10 days worth, worth, worth of work that they're anticipating. Um, it was a request um, that um, I didn't feel like it, it would be appropriate for me to make a decision on 10 days. That's why I, I wanted to bring it back to the board, mm -hmm. use the standard agreement, incur the direction from our legal team to um, make sure that we follow the process and that it's as transparent as possible. Yeah, no impact. So no impact. Any other questions? 
Okay, I'll take it out to the public. Any um, public comments on this agenda item? No? Okay. All right, I'll bring it back to the directors. Any further discussion or yeah? Um, uh, first of all, uh, thank, thank you very much for the further information and the uh, email response. Uh, um, I would like to know uh, more. I'd like to see the, the trigger language and also um, language in regards to reciprocity. I think that's the, obviously the benefit for the district is to have reciprocity. And, but more fundamentally, I, I think that unless there's an emergency, current emergency, that it's best practice to have the agreement to read before approval. So I would suggest that the board consider deferring this until we have the agreement um, in hand. To read. I, yes. I just like to comment back. Uh, the reason why we brought it back uh, in this form is we do have an anticipated workshop in the month of March. We may not be able to render a decision. Uh, until the end of March uh, to give Greenways the opportunity to make their repairs that they need now. The, the request did come in December, so I felt it was appropriate for us to bring this item so we can render a decision, mainly because the, it was very, very intermediate. The allotment of time was very small, um, and I felt it was uh, appropriate for us to make the request on behalf of Greenways in a timely manner. Thank you. Yes. Um, so in, in light of that information, uh, perhaps we can make this a very short term uh, agreement, uh, a few months until um, there is time for this board to uh, see the agreement in, in full. I think that would be appropriate. It would give them uh, the opportunity to make their repair, and then we can come back with the additional language for the board to review. Okay. I can support yes. that, and I, I thank you, Mayor, for bringing up just that. You know, as we, I think the intent is is yeah. always, you know, we're working yeah. in partnership, we're working in collaboration, but so often it comes down to what language is in a contract. So I think those are really fair and relevant points for the future um, and for our council, just to keep in mind as a yeah. priority of the board. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Any other further discussion? All right. Just, um, just a question. If we're going to limit it to just a few months, how many months? Uh, I think three months would be appropriate. So yes. that we can bring a, a more complete contract back yes. to the board and take a look. Yeah, and then we can continue it yeah. for the rest of the year. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. All Mr. Hunter, so a motion to execute an agreement with Green Waste Recovery LLC for single screen uh, short term processing services subject to legal counsel concurrence to form for a term of three months. A second. Okay, great. So, first by Kirk and a second by Rudaskiu. Um, all those in favor? All right. Okay. Yes, opposed? Okay. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, all right, so moving on to staff reports, we have review finance, operating, and recycling reports. Thank you, Chair. At this time, we have Mark Braxton, our county manager, to give our monthly report. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are now halfway through fiscal 2024, and um, Quick, quick summary of what, what's happened so far year to date in terms of our revenue. Our TIP fee revenue is slightly below plan at about uh, 220K, about 1%. Um, and there is no specific reasons for that, but you know, we should re recover and get back on track. Our other revenue sources, uh, the power sales have taken a, a big dip this year compared to budget and compared to last year. And that's a combination of factors. There's been more uh, repair work done more maintenance work done. And also we, you know, we get orders periodically from pg and &E to basically stop generating power um, if they're doing something to the, to the grid. Um, so that basically stops our, our power generation while that's on. 
Um, so that's the impact in the power revenue. Overall revenue is still ahead of plan by about uh, 300K. And we're uh, well ahead of last year at the same time. Um, our operating expenses are uh, above, above plan by about a million and a half dollars. And there's a couple of larger items in there are environmental services, which uh, handles the maintenance of the landfill gas field. Uh, there, there's been higher costs there for the maintenance and, and appliance that we have to do in that area. And our recycling services costs are higher. And recycling services includes the <clears throat> material that we send to Keith Day for processing all the wood products. It includes all the transportation costs of all of the merch material. And one item, which is a, a one-off this year, is as you know, we had you know, the MRF was down for a couple of weeks because we had to replace the baler. And what we did is we were shipping C and D material to a, a processor in San Jose, and that cost us three hundred thousand uh, dollars. You know, to ship that material. In terms of uh, material received, we're slightly ahead of last year in terms of material received, uh, about thirty thousand tons higher than the same period last year. And our diversion rate continues to be around mid 60% range for the entire MRF. And so gas being uh, as far as um, things, the landfill gas being 654,175 um, under, and then landfill operations being 387,419. One of some of the larger items that are down, is there like a like a, or like a reason, some sort of impact or something that wasn't a plan that happened on this uh, fiscal year? Well, yeah, some of the the landfill gas uh, you know, repair and maintenance items, you know, we, we didn't plan for those because we don't know that those are going to happen necessarily. But, you know, they're the things that we have to do. We have to uh, maintain the landfill gas field. There's, there's regulatory requirements we have to follow. So when something needs to be replaced or maintained, you know, we have to do it. And, and those tend to be quite expensive. So was that that machine that, that you were discussing that one time as far as how we can be able to regulate that? Well, that that was that was at the MRF, uh -huh. and that was on at the MRF line. And there, there's a, a, a piece of machinery out there called a baler. Uh -huh. So when material comes through the MRF line, when it gets to the end of the line, it gets baled. And like you'll see outside, you know, we have stacks of material that's baled up. And our, and our baler failed. There was a, a component that broke in the baler, and we, we had to replace the baler. Unfortunately, the baler that we have comes from Germany. Uh, there was no replacement baler available domestically, and so we had to wait for one to come from Germany. And apparently, you know, they don't have any supply of, of, uh, of balers here in this country, and Actually, there aren't very many users of this particular model of Baylor either. So anyway, that was a you know, complete surprise. And, you know, we are taking steps to avoid having that happen again. Mm -hmm. You know, we may end up buying another Baylor to have on hand where the vendor has said they're going to do something to improve their uh, supply chain so that they have a, a backup source or a supply on hand domestically so we don't have to wait, you know, two to three weeks mm -hmm to order one and get it delivered from Germany. So that, that was you know, a complete one-off thing. That, you know, we, again, we had no idea that was going to happen. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Garg? All right, thank you for your reporting. All right, you're welcome. Appreciate it. All right, on to 9B, report on the technical advisory committee. SB 1380, turn it on one. Thank you, Chair. We have Director Schultz uh, presenting the item. Good morning, Chair, members of the board, and a special welcome to our two new members. Thank you for joining us. Um, I come on a regular basis, on a monthly basis, to uh, give a report about on the Technical Advisory Committee, the, the staff working group uh, of members in each of your jurisdictions that participate, as well as the three haulers in our service area, so the western half of Monterey County. We work on a number of different uh, collaborative items that relate to solid waste and most recently, uh, quite a bit of talk about SB 1383, which is the food scraps law that Eric uh, mentioned Eric mentioned, and uh, presented on earlier uh, for the edible food recovery grant. So today I'll be giving an update on our November meeting. We had a hiatus of our, our board meeting and, and also our attack meeting in December. So travel with me back in time to November. 
Um, and I'll and I'll go through some of the items that we discussed. So the first item uh, on our agenda had to do with uh, compliance for SB 1383. So January 1st, 2024 starts the, the enforcement period. We had a two year um, educational period as a part of this law to get people up to speed, allow for the largest law and related to solid waste in 30 years of history um, to come before us and uh, educate the public get all of the communities up to speed on how they can participate. And so now we are entering the enforcement period to make sure that we are all on track uh, with the various elements of this law. The city of Marina, uh, in conjunction with their hauler green waste recovery, um, took uh, a little bit of a different approach uh, to enforcement. Uh, one of the main aspects of the law says that commercial and multifamily um, generators of waste are required to have an organics cart. And um, so what the city of Marina did in conjunction with the green waste was essentially do an automatic rollout of those organics carts. So if people hadn't already subscribed, not residents, but, but multifamily dwellings and commercials, if they hadn't already subscribed to organic service in that two-year educational period, they were given uh, given a, some, some education by the hauler, and then it was an automatic delivery of that cart. Uh, and that ensures that the city of Marina had 100% compliance in advance of this enforcement period. Um, so they came and gave a, a report out to the technical advisory committee about how that went. Many of the other jurisdictions are doing uh, a softer educational approach in advance of enforcement and not just delivering the cart, but making the, making the uh, commercial generator or the multifamily request that cart. So this was a little bit of a different approach. That said, it was uh, pretty successful for them. They only had one multifamily um, complex that had issues with that. Uh, as a multifamily complex, part of the contract states that they're required to pay for organic service. It's a little bit different than the structure of the agreement um, for a single family residence where it's kind of wrapped into the, the garbage rate. Um, so this particular complex uh, had Section 8 housing and wasn't able to pass along any of that cost mm -hmm. to their residents. So it was a, a burden on the, um, the landlord or property manager for that particular complex. They did work through some of those, those issues and I think ultimately were able to deliver a part and, and subscribe them to the service. But that was just something that came up that uh, was a kind of a new challenge that we hadn't expected. Um, so that was nice to hear from them. The TAC uh, does a great job of sharing all of the all of the experiences that happen in one jurisdiction for to another, so that way they can be applied if if uh, the city chooses to do it that way. <clears throat> Next item, um, as a part of the uh, law, also uh, you heard me talk about procurement of compost, making sure this law has um, circularity in uh, products and making sure that the compost that is produ produced has a home. Um, the law requires that the jurisdictions buy back compost and quite a bit of it. So uh, CalRecycle sets targets for that. Um, there's also been another law in the meantime, uh, AB 1985, uh, which was introduced by Rebus and ultimately passed, which kind of gave a ramping up effect. So that way it wasn't like all of a sudden you were supposed to procure 100% of what CalRecycle said. They said, okay, well, we can start with the first year at 30, second year at 30% as well, third year 65, and then ultimately to 100%. So 2023 was a 30% threshold uh, as to the total amount of compost that we'll ultimately have to procure. Um, we worked with Keith Day again, uh, and we have uh, direct service provider agreements, which are amazing. These direct service provider agreements are um, authorized by CalRecycle and allow uh, essentially the purchase of this compost by a third party. So like a local farm that are maybe already utilizes compost can purchase the compost on your behalf. And what that does is it reduces the overall rate from 28 tons per, or $28 per ton for the market rate of that compost down to just $5 per ton. And that's the amount that the cities um, are contributing to that. So it greatly reduces the, the uh, cost to all of the jurisdictions, it also makes it so you don't actually have to have that compost delivered at your doorstep and have to figure out what to do with it, how to transport it, how to spread it. Is it going to parks? Does your public works have more duties? That sort of thing. So it's going to great use in our local farms. And the last thing I'll say about this is that with um, some uh, assisting from the state with the CalRecycle local, local assistance grant funding, which your cities have all applied for, 
and received, um, the, the cost of that compost at the very reduced $5 a ton rate has been completely covered. So, so you have not paid any money out of pocket and we don't expect you to pay any money out of pocket at least through 2025 for the procurement of compost. So we're, we're bringing you as far as we possibly can without having this, uh, this uh, increase in cost as it relates to that aspect of the law. And uh, the last thing we did is, as it was our last meeting of the year, uh, we have had some fantastic leadership by Mike Nicanone. He is still here, um, uh, sharing <laughs> our tack uh, for the last, I think, was it four years? It's been four years, and he's been participating for much longer than that and been a, a great advisor. And we had Ted Tarasa as our uh, co-chair. So the two of them have really helped to steer and collaborate this technical advisory committee, and we couldn't do it without them as well as all of the other members. Um, so we thank them for their increased service. Mike is stepping down from the chair this year and uh, Ted is filling his shoes as our new chair of the technical advisory committee. And we have a couple of new members, newer members uh, from Pacific Grove. George First is joining us as a vice chair and also from Seaside, Kirsten Van Gend is joining us. Um, so we're happy to have them. They've been great members so far and they're now gonna continue leading that group. And Michael will stay with, with us for a few more months. Um, so those are your representatives on the TAC and uh, look forward to continuing to uh, bring forward the news and, and share that with you all. Thanks. Thank you, Zoe. Questions from the board? Yeah. I'm just, I'm not sure we accept the um, retirement. Um, <laughs> um, can we go on record with that? Uh, <laughs> thank if you I get a vote, I own it. <laughs> I, have to, I, have to, I have to abide by management at home. <laughs> um, okay, fair enough. I just, I'll just make a brief comment. Like, thank you so much. You've been just such a steadfast um, partner in helping Regen, and hopefully we'll have a chance to more formally recognize. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, I'm always about educating people about what to do and what not to do, and so on. And it's still a problem for me that our um, our waste cans don't have labels on them until they take them back and bring new. And I don't think people understand. So um, I guess this is more common. The question. Mm -hmm. The question I have is the question I get a lot in Carmel is why can't we use those little bi biodegradable bags? Why can't we? They sell them as the thing to do. And I think especially with multifamily housing, is there any opportunity to educate the public as to why we can't use those little bit? Show them an example of how they don't really biodegrade for a long time and it makes it Mm -hmm. you know less valuable as wood compost and uh, because that's the question i get all the time yeah we don't like the mess we want to use the bag you know it sure is easier i can't i can't disagree with you and we are we are out there educating uh to this effect i mean uh green waste recovery has signs on the side of their trucks uh certainly have to be able to read those within a couple of seconds because they're driving by uh so it doesn't get into all of the whys as you mentioned but as we are able to have conversations with folks at uh earth days and good old days and west end celebrations and all those different uh things you know we help to educate about how the compost needs to be this really high quality in order to go back into our row crops that are in monterey county and that that's you know if we start to include uh, this biodegradable or compostable plastics, not only is there a lot of confusion uh, amongst, you know, what it is or isn't the right product, but it leads to contamination. So we bring pictures of the different compost piles and show folks. In fact, there's a lot that's done in the schools as well to educate children in this regard uh, and showing them the different compost piles and post on social media where we're out there. It's just the uh, it's a challenge to obviously reach everyone with that kind of uh, deeper message. So we're working on it. But if you have any suggestions, I'm always going to do Well, I, I would suggest that each jurisdiction do a little bit better job of putting the word out in their own towns mm -hmm. about the why. You know, each of the representatives, we have a Friday letter that comes out every week that hundreds of our residents read, and it could be incorporated into information on regular basis that goes directly out to your residents. Yeah. And pictures, pictures, pictures would be 
absolutely great. And a little tattered pieces of those biodegradable bags and why that is a pollutant to the good compost. Okay. I believe there's also been uh, an article in Green Waste Recovery's um, membership letter. If you receive a, a, a paper bill, you know, that talks about that. So maybe we can pick that up and see if that can be included in the city newsletter. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. I do have comments slash questions as well. Maybe uh, I want to echo what um, Councilmember Polito mentioned, you know, reaching out to the jurisdictions and really promoting that would be essential. Um, I'm not sure what type, what languages you're currently promoting it as well. That makes a difference. Mm -hmm. um, are you I'm seeing, sorry, could you speak up? Are you seeing a bigger difference in certain demographics or certain regions or what are, what are the challenges you're seeing? I don't know that it's been analyzed uh, exactly that way. Certainly we have uh, information as it relates more to uh, routes and you know which cities or areas in the cities, but we don't have the demographic breakdown necessarily for which <laughs> what those households comprise. Um, so we haven't gotten quite that detailed yet. Um, in terms of education, you know, we like to educate in English and Spanish. Uh, and you know, the main educator for most of these activities is actually the hauler. So the hauler holds the direct relationship with the customer. In your case, it would be green waste recovery. So all of those newsletters, any kind of emails, uh, and technical assistance and outreach, that uh, that's really more, more held with the hauler than it is our organization as a processor. Yeah, that brings up another question for me. In multifamily housing, who gets that information from the hauler? Is it just go to the property owner landlord and he would he or she would be responsible for disseminating? And I think that's where there's a break in communication. Yes. Is it maybe going to the person who owns the property, but not to the tenants of that? Yeah, agreed. I think that the more work could certainly be done there. One of the challenges that we had with the law is the enforcement period just started this month. So many multifamilies, uh, because they had to pay for that service, didn't opt to have it immediately. You know, there's concerns about space constraints uh, within the trash enclosure areas and adding an additional cart, paying for that additional cart. So we're just going to start to see now some uptick in um, subscription to that service and, and more outreach to multifamilies. I would say that we're uh, behind as it relates to multifamilies compared to single family residences because they already have that infrastructure at their house and it's a wrapped in cost, if you will. So more to be done there. Thank you. Yeah, I will say in terms of education, and I, I feel like our haulers have done green waste's, that's what I see, has done a much better job with their newsletter and their education. I know that comes from all of your input. So thank you for that. But I also feel that um, sometimes information that comes from us, from region, is um, maybe accepted differently or, mm -hmm. you know, instead of, you know, we think of green waste as sort of a business, right? We're paying them. It's a different type of, you know, customer relationship versus um, region, which is we're here, we're a governmental organization, we're here to support, you know, so it's, I don't know. For me, I feel like it has a different feel. Okay. And so, um, you know, I don't know how Regen can be a part of those communications, but I feel like, um, you know, and, and sort of that fundamental, like, this is a, you know, this is a compost road. This is how it, you know, I know you guys do a great job of educating, but um, like that fundamental understanding, like you know, the hauler doesn't, you know, like they, we just see them taking it. Right, but like the end product, I think is really important to be able to, to see. So thank you for that perspective. Yeah, That's good. We have done. We have, have not like Regen hasn't done any outreach. No, absolutely. Uh, no. Certainly, I don't, I don't, we don't buy Yeah, no, you, and you yeah. didn't. Sorry, okay. you didn't. Um, we do quite a bit of tours of the compost yard. Uh, you know, that's obviously based upon bandwidth and that sort of thing. Um, but another thing that we do, um, sorry, I'm blanking all of a sudden. There was something I was going to say. And well, was just well, while you're thinking of that, yeah. I just want to say I did a, a quick review. I just it was on the website and I haven't been able to look at the videos that you have, like the virtual tours. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know even know if those are new, but I thought, oh, that's, I need to go back and look at those. So the virtual tours do need to be updated. Okay. Um, that's something that we're working on with the website refresh. It's going to be more encompassing. But um, Eric, as our social media guru on site, has done a pretty comprehensive 
from uh, household to processing and out into the farm video of step-by-step -step what the composting process looks like and how to participate. Um, that's available on Instagram and anywhere else. Um, Instagram on our main page. You click on right at the top. You can see the steps. Um, and also, um, I call this uh, evergreen content, which means um, you don't just post once and then it goes away. It's uh, I do this almost weekly. Uh, same with batteries. So batteries and contamination uh, bags and our Merkin bags in our compost yard. Those are things that I try to communicate almost weekly. Mm -hmm. um, and since I've been hired, it's been a couple of years. Um, I brought that uh, experience, the social media experience, to try to build um, that social media we did presentation um, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're in the process of building that. So we could use your help, you know, from your jurisdictions or um, from your own personal pages, sharing that yeah. content on your own. Um, that's kind of the key to the success of social media sharing. Um, and then it gets seen by other people and they see um, our social media as a uh, um, an information source, a trusted information source. So um, every share that you do, like, um, Supervisor Wendy does a great job, thank you. Um, you're showing it to your constituents and then uh, they're seeing what we're posting. Uh, our, we see growth from that. So um, I'll continue to post that content every week. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's really great because if you provide each jurisdiction through the tag already made here, uh, plug this into whatever communications you are sending out in your community, it makes it a lot easier than if they have to create something on their own because that always gets, oh, I'll do that later. But if it's ready made, that you can, through the TAC, ask your jurisdiction to disseminate. That's exactly what we did in the uh, January of 2022 when the law started. We created a toolkit and we yeah. provided links to all of the resources, whether it be flyers or web pages. Uh, we provided that all in one package to all of the jurisdictions, and it was it was interesting because, uh, you know, with new legislation, what happened was next door was a fire with. Now we all of a sudden have to comply with this new law of food scraps. And what I found interesting was the community. Uh, there were certain members in the community, uh, particularly the sustainability community, that really sung the tax message about that education and used that toolkit. And I was seeing people who I didn't even know saying, oh, no, here's the official flyer, here's the acceptance list, here's that. And so it was kind of like our job was a little bit done, and these members of the community who were influencers came forward and carried that message, uh, and especially as it related to no bags. Yes. Yeah. And the thing that I remembered um, <laughs> that I forgot earlier was uh, one of the things that we did as Regen was uh, sponsor some underwriting on KAZU. So trying to, uh, specifically as it relates to food scraps, we've got some other messages now about batteries, like Eric mentioned, uh, um, and uh, a more waste-free holiday. Uh, that was another thing that we did. But um, yeah, thanks for the information about the perception of it coming from Regen. Um, we'll try to work together more to do some that. Yeah, no, that's great. I'll just add, um, and thank you for the shout out. And I give all credit to Eric Mora, who's my staff around online, <laughs> a lot of our social media. But um, maybe it would be beneficial to share that toolkit with the board okay. um, so that we can share it in whatever mechanism you know we have. I think part of what I hear you saying, and messaging coming from Rita, and what I hear you saying, Karen, is you know, people are looking for their trusted messengers. They're looking for those who they know, who they trust, who they um, you know, who, who they know we're going to deliver uh, accurate information. And that's, you know, you're elected, like your community already knows you and trusts you. So uh, having messaging come from you directly is significant. And then if we have the information, we can share it with our, you know, staff, who we know who's people in our uh, uh, city uh, or jurisdiction who are sharing information. I just wanted to offer one other additional thought as we're sitting here. The county has a media briefing every week, and if you guys ever wanted to be um, featured on that media briefing with some key messaging, we could definitely arrange that. But um, thank yeah, you. I think I think we're doing a great job. And and the reality, you know, this is for me. I always think about like you know 
the reality for me, I get home at seven o'clock. I'm trying to, you know, make sure the homework's done, make sure that like just the, the house is functioning, the laundry is rolling. I mean, I we get those mailers from our hauler and they go straight. I don't even open the envelope. It goes straight into the bill pile. And then when we're doing bills, you just, you know, it's um the capacity that so many of our residents have to like take in more information and manage more micro decisions throughout the day. It, the reality is it's just limited. So it's touching people where they're at when they have capacity to pay attention um, and it does in languages and it does in mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of those things that just takes time. Um, so just keep it up and we're headed in the right direction. And Eric, you're doing a phenomenal job with, you make it so easy just to hit share. I'll be laying in bed, putting my son to bed at night and I can pop on to read again. You know, I'm scrolling on my phone while he's laying there going to sleep and I pop on to read and I can just hit share, 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 post the story, push the story. It takes 30 seconds. And so thank you for uh, the work that you're doing. Yeah, sure. On building on that, I think it's it's also important for us as this as public officials to be sharing, so I definitely do. I'm, I'm with you on that one. You mentioned KZU as mm -hmm. one of your promotions. Is that the, what were what was the outreach um, or the numbers that you did? Um, how long was was a promotion going on? That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I think we've done it twice so far in the two years, and it was for a number of months. I know the spend was around fifteen thousand dollars. We made sure to do morning and uh, afternoon and evening, and a little bit on the weekends. But like morning edition was one of the programs we wanted to target. I want to say it was two or three months, but we've done that twice now. And was that the only station that you reached out to? Um, we did. Uh, we did something on La Preciosa, but that was. I want to say that was for a different campaign. It was a few years back. It was for our hot, one of our holiday campaigns a few years back. Gotcha. So maybe just food for thought, diversifying that outreach. Yes. Because um, you, you'll get more out of it. That way I've done this in the past. So having having uh, everything straight across the board equal makes a big difference and helps the agency better out. Just food for thought. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Zoe, just yeah. one one more question. I just want to again thank the TAC for your compost procurement. I know that that was a heavy lift um, in you know with this legislation. Um, can you remind us? So it went from twenty eight dollars to five dollars. How did uh, what what paid for that differential, or how did was that just a negotiation, or what? That was the program that we set up. So what happens is the $5 is more of an administrative cost that the jurisdictions all provide. And then the $23, which is the Delta, yeah. is actually what the farmers will pay. So they sign a contract, so they get a reduced cost on their compost. So $5 it's, off for them. It's $5 off for them and $5 incurred for you all. And then we manage that contract. Got it. Yeah. And But the, then we don't even have to pay $5 because the county is like a Correct. Okay. Great. For now. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then do you do you have any sense for what our percentage is? I know it's, we, you know, we need to be at 30% or we needed to be at 30% mm -hmm. last year. Do you have any idea what our percentage is for procurement? Yes, in 2024, it's jumping to 65%. Mm -hmm. That will also be covered. And then in 2025, it, it becomes the whole 100% and then it, it's expected to stay there. And so and so, do we think we'll be able to meet that 65%? Yes, with the grant funding. Yeah. Yeah, and with the programs, yes. I mean, yeah. They keep saying that's one of the great things about them is they have a fantastic compost market, a lot of relationships. And so um, it's the snap of the finger for them to find a buyer for that compost. Super. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Um, item 10 is other correspondence. I don't think we have any, so we'll move to general management communications. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, at this time, I have a few communications. I wanted to thank uh, all the directors and all the staff and all the workforce that attended our holiday dinner. It was a success. We all had a great time. It was a great time for interaction. Uh, uh, people really embellished the opportunity to laugh and and uh, a company wanted uh, one another throughout that evening. So it was a great uh, participation. And, and thank you guys for the opportunity to share that with our workforce. I think it's really important. And, and they're really excited mm -hmm. talking about next year. So <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really appreciative of the holiday dinner. We also had Rancho Cielo visit, a group from Rancho Cielo Youth Campus uh, toured the site on December 5th. And they also gave us a presentation on their sustainability completion uh, project that they had. Uh, um, had been 
working on in Southern California. So it was a great day. It was an opportunity uh, for us to share the dynamics of our operation. You know, people think landfill, and it's only landfill, but it's much more diverse. It has uh, landfill to gas energy, the composting, and uh, creating a pathway for them to acknowledge some of the job opportunities here. And then also um, just spreading the word of, of who we are with the, with the youth was a great opportunity. I think we had 15 youth and, and five adults that attended, that attended with the youth. So we were ex extremely excited to have them here. I also attended the Marina City Council meeting on December 5th uh, for the older study results. So uh, those were presented to the city and we were able to uh, answer directions in correlation to the, the older study itself. And I, I think we did really well in uh, what the results and the pathway that we were already on uh, items to mitigate and reduce our emissions and odors. Uh, we can currently practice that regularly. Um, so, you know, we want to better continue that collaborative effort with Marina uh, to help resolve and really identify what, what are the issues that we are involved in on any of the set or nearby. Um, also, the audit finding has not been received. Uh, staff is working with the auditor to present the audit to the board, uh, most likely in our February board meeting. We are, you know, I, I think we are past the challenges of getting the results back and we're just giving our comments back on the final uh, draft, and then it'll come back to the board uh, in the future. Uh, the white paper draft is also being distributed among staff uh, in the next week. It'll, it'll come back uh, to the February 7th committee meetings in a draft form. It'll come to the full board at the end of February in draft form as well. And then we will receive feedback uh, throughout the month of March, and then have a final of uh, the white paper for our uh, hopefully for the board to receive in our March board meeting as well. So it'll be a little process to get final feedback and comments. And some of the items that we've heard on the white paper is, is um, you know, stay to stay to where we're at. Um, it, why do we receive outside volume? Have the answer, have the whole board be in conjunction with what the response is to our community and public. So there are other scenarios in the white paper that um, we want to make sure we identify that correlate to our existing operation and, and to be very clear on the pathway that we want to continue or not continue here at Regen Monterey. So I'm, I'm re extremely excited about the white paper. It's taken us a lot of work and really work from the historians, people that have been with the district for a great period of time. And then also researching what has happened over maybe one to two decades prior to us arriving as well. So it, it'll have a full timeline of occurrences of how we got to our current state here at Regen Monterey. Extremely excited about that. I also have a planned workshop. Um, it's generally scheduled for March 6th. Um, so not having committee meetings on March 6th in Laiu, the committee meetings, we will have the workshop and it is um, a presentation around items that are important for this board to recognize as we continue future meetings in the future, it'll just help uh, clarify our position on finances, our existing operation, and what's ahead in the future for Regen Monterey and some of the projects that lie ahead of us. So it'll give us a good perspective and we can hear back from the board is you know, how they feel about those items and uh, do we have them prioritized in the correct manner. So I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to incur the workshop. Um, as they mentioned, uh, Zoe mentioned earlier, SB uh, 1383, uh, Monterey Regional uh, District and the haulers sent a letter explaining the upcoming enforcement on SB 1383 to all the members, agencies, schools. Um, and we had Franco out there uh, giving presentations. He's our public and education outreach specialist. And, and again, working with, with the haulers to, to be out there recognizing what's on the forefront of SB 1383. Um, and at this point, but that is all my general Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to board communications. And under that, we've got board committee appointments. So we, um, at the board, we have uh, regular meetings with our finance and personnel committee um, meetings. And then we also have um, our ad hoc point districts um, with one water. So I'd like to um, to cover these appointments with the finance um, committee. I'd like to so continue to appoint um, Mayor Pete on that committee. 
um, fix up that appointment. <laughs> um, I'd like to continue on the finance um, committee, and then we also have Peter Buki, who has also offered to to be on that in that committee. So I'd like to um, make those three appointments. Um, in terms of the personnel, uh, we are going to continue. Um, seems like that committee is happy to continue with its current uh, members. So. Um, Director Blackwelder, um, Director Berlito, and then Director Rudescu. So um, thank you for, for that. Um, and then uh, Director Barber is also um, agreed to stay on with the Special Districts Association. So with that appointment, appreciate that. Um, and then in terms of the ad hoc uh, joint districts with M1, um, I would like to join that, um, that committee and then we'll also continue with Director Blackwelder and Director Rudescu. So, um, is this something we need to have a, a motion and vote on? Or, or do I just make the appointments? I believe you just make the appointment. Okay. Yes. Um, is there any comments, questions? Yeah, because so I look at the form. So are we keeping Jason Campbell on as an ex officio for a couple of committees? I think that's a really good idea. People enjoy that. You become the ex officio. Oh, you become yeah, as chair. As yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So that changes. Yeah, so the, yeah, this is was not affiliated with the current. Got it. Got it. Okay, so that's far. And then um oh, I see it was for 2023. So um, and then also wanted to see do we have any appointments for um our new uh board members? Um, uh, uh director Ricky is gonna be on finance. Oh on finance, okay. Yes. Yeah. And and Alexis board? at this point does not have oh. an appointment. Okay. Are you looking for an appointment? Are you looking to be <laughs> <laughs> Are we looking for more work to do? Special <laughs> district. Yeah, it's just one side. It's just one side. I'm kidding. Okay. I think we have to come up with eight. Very good. I didn't want to. You out. Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, great. Any other comments? Yes. Well, you kind of skipped the general comments and went right to the appointments, but. Um, oh, <laughs> yes, before we close, but uh, I just like to say how much fun I had at the holiday party. Ah. And it was great to see such a good board turnout at the holiday party. I think uh, it was a wonderful event. It was great. It was well organized, and people really looked like they were having a great time. So thank you for inviting us and uh, making us feel welcome here. Yeah, well, we appreciate it. And the workforce. Definitely acknowledges seeing the board there, their presence, their leadership. Um, and, and so we were all excited. Uh, the turnout was amazing. I, I thought it was the best turnout that I've seen in my tenure here. Ms. Berta, uh, we appreciate your uh, leadership in that aspect of organizing and getting our social committee to prepare such a venue for, for everybody to enjoy. So, so thank you. So it's an employee planned and or, or organized and coordinated and worked to that. So thanks to the social committee. Great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I agree. The other nice. it, it was great. I I echo uh Karen as well. Um and the I kept looking at the um silent auction here so I could kept being mesmerized <laughs> by everything that you all had. I was like, oh my gosh, it was just very unique, very uh innovative and connected to the work that they do. And was it Murph that that um the that, 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 that uh donated that yeah the barrel yeah that that will forever be in the history okay I will always remember that and the person that won and how happy they were so thank yeah. you for all the hard work that you did okay. if you wouldn't mind chair uh, you know I just want to add context for the new members is um you know we we did a, a silent auction and that was a contribution from all the employees to fundraise uh, contributions to give to a charitable or organization after. So it, it was an opportunity. It showed the employees engagement. They went all out. They they uh, donated and contributed. All the different teams built something different. And then we took those funds and when we donated, and Bert, if you wouldn't mind um, talking about who we, or Eric, uh, who we made the contributions to, I think it would be appropriate. Sure. So the the, the social committee, the organizers of the event, um, decide, seek nominations from everyone else as to where we donate the funds. Uh, there were 3000 a little bit over $3,000 was collected from the uh, five or six uh, baskets of gifts that were raffled off. And this year, the uh, social committee decided 
that we they wanted to make a direct impact on, on families in need. So rather than donate it to an organization where they would then distribute the funds, you know, um, maybe not have as much of an impact directly to a family, uh, we contacted school districts in um, North Monterey County, Salinas and Marina, since we're in Marina, and asked uh, for their community liaison to nominate or, or bring forward two families um, who would be receiving a little bit over $500. So six families, two from each school district, received a little bit over $500. And the families that were nominated, um, the community uh, liaison provided a little bit of background information. Most of them are um, four, five, six children, uh, single mothers, or both parents are, are involved, but they're not working. Some of them living in vehicles, homeless families. Uh, so it was it was really good to see them come in to receive the, the funds. Yeah. And Eric did a great job in promoting it um, externally but through social media, uh, maintaining the family information private, but sharing the the purpose and the 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 intent of the program. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Bernard. I, I think again it's a direct reflection of how proud of an organization we are. Our workforce is just so proud and the com contributions continue to go out to the community, whether it's through the organization or through our workforce. We're really, 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 I'm really proud to be part of this organization. And thank you guys for your dedication and your support to the organization as well. Thank you for your leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful use of that money. So mm -hmm. thank you. A comment. Yes, please. Um, uh, just a couple uh, comments. Just want to make sure we have a schedule of new, new board presentations for our new board members. I know that was really helpful when I joined the board. Um, so I want to make sure that's on our, our list of things to do. Um, just to request, and if we can send calendar invites out um, for the meetings for the year, that'll make sure we get them all blocked on my calendar um, and that we include however much time we think it'll be. Otherwise, I end up having to leave early and I, I prefer to stay for the full time. Um, the March 6th workshop, I won't be able to attend. I'll be at a meeting in Sacramento. So um, I send my regrets for that. Um, and um, I just have to, to, to brag for a second. So in the three year, uh, in our three year uh, recognition for all Regen employees, it comes with a Regen jacket. <laughs> Something to look forward to for. Anyway, I just want to say, um, I again, Regent does such a great job of employee recognition, and it's uh, it's an honor to be a part of the organization. So, but I think we're um, oh, and could we um, bring back the odor study for this board? I had a chance to read through it, and I just the quality of the report was less than what I would have expected. Um, and I think that having a chance for us to go on record with what um, with what our expectations were versus what we got back from that, I think would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. Any other additional comments? Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. We'll go ahead and close out the meeting. Meeting um, and our next meeting date. Oh, sorry. Yes. Can I just make a comment on the committees? Yes, yeah, because uh, our district's the only other district that goes to special districts association in Monterey County because the rest of the jurisdictions are cities and counties. Okay. And uh, just a suggestion so you, you could have all your board members inclusive, we have an alternate member that goes to the special districts association. So, and so it might be a way that you could get participation right now for all your board members. Oh, so like alternate through? Is that what you're Well, what, what happens is we have a, a board member and an alternate, and they both come. Oh, other, I see. other districts will send more than one. And, and then that way, if somebody has a, a conflict, it's easier to always have a conflict. Ah. Maybe, Alexa, okay. maybe an alternate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alexis, would you be interested in being an alternate? Sure. So working with Dr. Barber, just see. And, and you both can get yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Question. Okay, we'll close out this meeting and uh, next meeting date is February 16th. Thank you, everyone.